Hey everybody, and welcome to my uh, Twitter, well not Twitter, my live stream flip through of Spelljammer's uh, Spelljammer Adventure in Space, the new 5e release from Wizards of the Coast. Uh, uh, Wizards of the Coast was kind enough to send me a review copy, and normally I do Twitter flip throughs, and I figured for this one uh, it might be special enough to do a live stream since I never really do these things on live stream, and why not try it out and see if, if the format works a little better on live stream rather than Twitter, although I really like the Twitter uh, flip throughs. But, you know, let's try something new. Why not? Um, feel free to ask questions on the chat. I'm monitoring the chat. Um, I'm going to try to do this as, as best I can. I'm uh, not really used to doing this type of stuff, but, you know, let's give it a shot. So, what is the Spelljammer Adventures in Space box set? Well, it includes three books and a DM screen. It has a book called The Astral Adventures Guide, which is this book right here. A uh, really pretty cover. As you can see, it's got the uh, the Mind Flare ship on it, um, and it is a 64-page hardcover book that includes uh, character options for space-based characters, uh, deck plans, and descriptions of spell jamming ships. So this is kind of like the rules book for the set. Uh, there is an adventure called The Light of Zar Zarixis, uh, and you can see an astral elf on the cover. Um, this book is a 64 page adventure and the level range is between 5 and 8. So it uh, should be a, probably a short adventure, I guess, if, if the level range is that low um, and that narrow. And then Boo's Astral Menagerie, which is kind of the monster manual for this set. Uh, you can see Minsk and Boo here on the cover uh, riding some sort of creature. I guess that's some sort of uh, astral dragon or space dragon or something. Uh, and this book is a. 64 page book as well and it's got uh, all sorts of critters for the book for the spell jammer setting all right so the set also includes a dm screen um and a poster map the dm screen i'll show it to you real quick it's got and let's see how i'm going to do this on the uh on the cover on, on how i'm going to do this on the live stream but basically here's the uh it's a it's a shot of the astral sea. Uh, that's what you get on the DM screen here. And then let me see if I can show you the panels. Uh, it's kind of a basic screen. You got like some ship tasks uh, on one of the panels. You have some ship encounters on another panel. Um, what else? You have uh, rules for suffocating and weightlessness here on this panel here. And then some uh, astral encounter charts and some wild space encounter charts. So you know it's it's pretty pretty good for Spelljammer. Um, doesn't have any real rules uh, beyond the first panel that it has the uh, setting a DC, uh, the skills and abilities that you find in other other DM screens, suffocating rules, weightlessness, uh, and then you have ship to ship starting distance and rules for crashing. Uh, the rest is just charts, so pretty useful, I guess, if you're going to run a Spelljammer um, campaign. Um, I'm going to be monitoring the chat for any questions. I see one already came up. Are Tinker Gnomes mentioned? I have no idea. I haven't opened the books. This is a flip through, uh, just like Twitter. I'm looking at the book for the first time. I haven't looked at it yet. So why don't we do that? Why don't we take a look? The first book I'm going to um, review with you is Boo's Astral Menagerie. Uh, that's the um, the monster manual type book for this, and we're just gonna sort of flip through it, see what's interesting about it, see if anything catches my eye, just like I do on Twitter. And if you have any questions, I'll I'll stop and see if I can answer them. I'm gonna try not to spoil too much, um, but you know, beware, spoilers abound because we are live streaming and I'm looking at the books, so consider this an unboxing, and and you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hide too much stuff. I don't think I can. So tw uh, there will be spoilers. Okay. So let's take a look at Boo's Astro Menagerie, the first book in the uh, box set. And let me see here. By the way, if somebody in the chat can give me a heads up about the audio, how's the audio? Uh, let me know if it's good. Oh, there's Boo, and he's uh going for the eyes, jumping at somebody. Here you go. Here is the uh, the covers. Uh, the Hydro 74 
alternate covers are really nice too. Uh, we are looking right now at the regular uh, cover, the standard cover. Here's the table of contents, and I can see here uh, a few monster astral elves. There's a few entries for astral elves. Space clown. Uh, Chris Perkins has talked about those guys. Solar dragons. Uh, I guess that's a new type of dragon. Uh, I may use that in my campaign. Actually, I'm running a a, a dragon base campaign. <coughs> All right, let me see. So let's start flipping through. Creatures A to Z. Here's some quotes. Uh, Minsk and Boo. Boo the space ham hamster up close and front and center here. He's the star of the book. Um, let me see. So, Boo is a hamster. More precisely, he's a miniature giant space hamster. A rather famous one. Well, he is the... Uh, it's interesting in the uh, in the first edition of of Spelljammer back in second edition, space hamsters uh, were kind of a thing, but they weren't like the star of the setting like like they've become in Five E. Uh, they powered one of the ships, if I remember correctly, uh, but they weren't exactly you know, anything out of the ordinary for the setting itself. They they were kind of just just were, but they weren't this big thing that they've become. Um, so the level ranges here, the, the CR blocks, they go from 0 to 20. Uh, 20 being the ancient solar dragon. That's the most powerful monster in the, in the book. The space hamster is a uh, quarter of a CR creature. Can I look at defiler powers? That's a question in the, in the chat. Where is the defiler? i got to find that. I'm not sure where that is. Astral Encounter. So here are some charts for Astral Encounters. Initial Attitude, Wild Space Encounters, Astral Sea Encounters. So I guess I'm reading the book out of order because you probably should be familiar with what a wild space is and um, how it relates to, to Spelljammer. So I should probably read the rule books first, but too bad. I'm going to start with the monsters because monsters are fun. So, Artooks, uh, intelligent plant creatures. Check that out. Artook warriors, Artook priest, Artook elder. I like that they give you different versions of the monsters for different level ranges. So, like this guy's a CR2. Well, CR2, 2, and 3. It's not that different. Let me see. Typically lawful evil. So, we see that the alignment. Um, the new standard for alignments where they typically they give you a typical um, alignment what else any spell spell casting psionics um, no list of spells they cast one a day each with vivifying tongues one a day each heal calm emotions uh, astral elves so a new type of elf here um, Astral Elves, and they reference the adventure. Astral Elves of Xerxes. Astral Elf Aristocrat. There's an Aristocrat, Commander, Honor Guard, Star Priest, and Warrior. Uh, challenge 8. Radiant Beam, 3 a day. I guess it's some kind of spell. The spell casting here. Is one day each fly misleading sending so no spell list that, that's gone and we've seen that before in 5e already nothing new I like the look of the astral elves they're, they're kind of cool I like these masks very neat auto gnome a mechanical gnome that resembles the rock gnome who created it I wonder if that's a tinker gnome who created it no message, no mention of Tinker Gnomes here. No, not a Tinker Gnome. That would have been cool. Maybe a shout out to Crin Space and Tinker Gnomes, but no, nothing like that here. Uh, what else do we have? Brogs, four armed giants, Chewingas. Look, Chewingas make a return. 
uh, to 5e. Chris Perkins loves his Chewingas. Uh, we've seen them already in various environments, and now we see them out in, in space. He loves those Chewingas. So Chewingas live in wild space. We've seen them in the snow. We've seen them uh, in the jungle. We've seen them in a few places, and now we see them in wild space. Safe to say Chewingas are a new part of D&D &D lore that's here to stay. Uh, what else? Cosmic Horrors. Ugh, that guy's nasty. Cosmic Horror is a CR-18 creature. A ton of legendary actions. Uh, the Doar. What is the Doar? Short, pudgy, flightless avians. They're penguins. D&D penguins. Small Fey, any alignment? CR0. All right. The aesthetics, eye monger. What is an eye monger? Is an eye monger like a beholder? Got an anti magic gullet. It's an aberration. Although an eye monger doesn't project an anti-magic cone from its eye as a beholder does, magic is suppressed inside its gullet. All right, so it's not really a beholder. It doesn't have eye rays, does it? No, it just bites. Okay, we'll take a look at that guy later. Fair gage. That's a big creature large but look at the size of it it's kind of big ah here we go gif or jif doesn't matter these guys are old school uh, second edition spell jammer here they return for 5e uh, officially with their space setting the jif the hippo people uh, we got a jif shipmate a shock trooper and a warlord uh, the warlord goes up to a challenge 10 uh, the ship made a three, and the shock trooper a six. These guys have firearms. These guys have smoke gun muskets. And swords. This guy has a grenade. Thunder bomb. Very cool. The warlord has legendary actions. Three legendary actions. A move, a rallying cry, um, and a weapon of choice. Double barreled mas uh, musket for the warlord. Very cool. Get the Yankees. Get the Yankees are obviously a big part of the astral plane. And here they are. Um, this book mentions that the monster manual and the monsters of the multiverse contain a variety of Gith Yankee. Uh, here we're adding three more Gith Yankees. Um, a Buccaneer, a Star Seer, and a Xenomancer. Uh, the Xenomancer goes to 9, the Star Seer 7, and the Buccaneer 3. Uh, the Xenomancer travels to the farthest reaches of wild space on the Astral Sea, even visiting worlds of the material plane from time to time to study and catalog creatures it has never encountered before. That's an interesting story hook. Uh, Buccaneer. Many of them are warriors who lost the will to serve the Lich Queen, live by their own code. The star seers uh, believe that the stars are the eyes of the multiverse. They use their magic to contact ancient stellar entities. Get the Yankees are always fun, classic D&D creature. Hedozies, Hedozies. I'm not familiar with these guys, I don't remember them. Were they in the previous um, Spelljammer? Not sure. Anyways, shit. Uh, those are slender, highly adaptive humanoids with similar features. With simian features, sorry, in their own language. Okay, so they're like space apes. I think they were part of. I don't remember. Someone in the chat will probably know. Warrior shipmate explorer. Pretty basic. Um, low level critters, half, an eighth, and challenge two. Oh, someone in the chat, uh, Dar Jr. in the chat is telling me that these are uh, Yazarians from Star Frontiers. There you go. Jammer Leech. Jammer Leech is a barnacle-like creature that begins life as a space-dwelling spore that attaches to the hull of a ship. 
or plant a tiny Kendor, uh, Kendori, uh, the largest creatures in wild space. These are the, the aquatic, these are basically the whales of space. Uh, they're Challenge 7, they're gargantuan creatures. Uh, these are big critters here. And you see these in the artwork of the DM screen, for example, the, the, the Spelljammer screen. Ooh, Lunar Dragons. Lunar Dragons, also known as Moon Dragons or Phase Dragons. These are going to be part of my campaign for sure, my dragon-based campaign that I'm running right now. I've got to figure out how to do it because we're not going to go exactly spell jamming, but I'll, I'll figure it out. So you have a Lunar Dragon, Challenge 19. You have an Adult Lunar Dragon, a Young Lunar Dragon, a Wormling. Really nice. Let me see. Let me see what kind of breath weapon they have, these lunar dragons. Uh, cold breath. The dragon exhales a blast of frost in a 90 foot cone. So basically, cold attack. Cold breath, cold breath. And they can phase. Interesting. Okay, so a cold base attack. And immune to cold as well. Interesting. All right. Megapede. Megapedes are enormous centipedes that can be as much as 150 feet long. What do they do? They bite, life drain, and psychic bomb. All right. Mercane. Merchants who travel primarily who trade primarily magic items and advanced technology, including artifacts and spell jamming helms. Well, there's a plot hook right there. Markings. They are challenge rating five. Murder Comet. <laughs> it looks like the Green Goblin. Murder Comet. Challenge five. They slam and spit fire. Neo geese. Neo geese. In one of the previous books, aren't they slavers? They are. These are the guys that that capture umber hulks, right? Let me see. I don't think there's any reference to slavery here now. Uh, hatred is as foreign a sensation as love, showing loyalty in the absence of authority's foolishness, Naogi pirates, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Plasmoids, oozes, intelligent oozes that can alter their shape at will. Like a Baymax? Plasmoid boss, challenge four, challenge quarter, challenge three. This one has an uncanny dodge reaction. Purslins. Evil, worm like creatures that live on the astral plane. Malevolent, worm like creatures that live on the astral plane. Rhaegars. Rhaegar are androgynous folk who evolved into humanoid shape from a species of cephalopods. I don't think I've ever seen these guys before. This monster comes with a magic item. Usable only by the Rhaegar who created it. Okay. Well. Scavers, shark-like scavengers that fly through space, feeding on whatever they can fit in their mouth. Okay, this is something I'd probably use if I were running Spelljammer as a nice random encounter. 
So challenge quarter, four, five, and 11. That looked kind of cool. Solar dragons. All right, we had lunar dragons. Now we have solar dragons. That's a nice piece of art there. Solar dragon breath weapon is a photonic breath. The dragon exhales a flashing moat of radiant energy that travels to a point the dragon can see. So it's a radiant damage uh, breath weapon. The ancient one is a challenge 20. It's a cool piece of art. Adult solar dragon, young solar dragon, solar dragon wormling. You get all the all the different sizes. Uh, here we go. Chris Perkins spoke about these as space clowns, and I think it's because he's a fan of killer clowns from outer space. Space clowns are inhabitants of wild space system known as clown space. The humans who once inhabited the system's three ring shaped worlds placed their faith in a god of revelry. Their worship ceremonies were centered on festivals and frivolity. So it's basically a circus world, including a three ring. All right. Marauding space clowns feed on humanoid flesh. Well, you don't want to meet these guys. Uh, challenge rating two. They fire ray guns. They can shock you. They cast spells. And they can take a phantasmal force. They also blow up when they die. Like draconians. Space eel, space guppy. Lots of fish type creatures. It is the Astral Sea, and here we are. Space hamsters, giant space hamsters. Large beast, space hamster is a tiny one. Space hamsters resemble the terrestrial kin, but both in their appearance and general demeanor, and they come in a variety of colors. There's a star of the, uh, the star of the show. Gnomes have tried to build spell jamming ships powered by giant space hamster wheels so far without success. But I thought in, in the previous spell jammer they did power the ships. I don't remember now. I may be wrong. Space swine. Pigs can fly. Uh, spell jammer has been rumored since 5e came out. It's finally out. When pigs fly, well, pigs flew. There they are. You got your spell jammer. Surans. Starlight apparition. Starlight apparition is a transparent projection of unfortunate souls who perished in wild space or in the astral sea. Okay, here's the defilers. Somebody was asking me about defiling. Uh, defiling is a mechanic um, out of Dark Sun and Dark Sun spellcasters who cast spells defile the land around them where they can choose to. Um, defilers are known as. Uh, this Surin defiler has the ability to defile. Uh, it's a action that recharges on a six. Uh, ordinary vegetation within 10 feet of the Surin withers and dies. In addition, each creature within 10 feet of the Surin must make a constitution saving throw, taking necrotic damage on a failed save or half as much damage in a successful one. The Surin regains uh, hit points for each creature that fails the saving throw. So that's the defiling mechanic. And then now you can start working on your Dark Sun conversion. That's how defiling works. Uh, plants die around you, and everyone around you has to make a constitution saving throw or take necrotic damage. Pretty easy. Works well, I think. And here's, uh, speaking of Dark Sun, here is more creatures straight out of the Dark Sun. Um, the Dark Sun setting, the Three Queens. And they're basically uh, insect-like creatures. Uh, we have a gladiator, a hunter, and a mystic. Uh, the gladiator is a CR7, a 2 for the hunter, and the mystic is a 5. Uh, the mystic uh, has psionics. Basically spell casting with no, no components. Uh, he can levitate, self only, mage hand, the hand is invisible. Uh, freedom of movement, self only, invisibility, self only.
Yeah, that's that's nice art. Vamp vampirates. Oh, vampirates. Vampire pirates. Uh, the walking, talking husk of dead pirates who refuse to go quietly into the afterlife. I wonder what... Uh, Let me see. What do they have? Energy drain, light crossbows. They explode, so they blow up when they die. Explode. Spider climb, energy drain. These are kind of cool. Ship and... Oh, this is the captain. Ship invisibility. A ship upon which the captain stands along with all creatures and objects aboard it becomes invisible to creatures not aboard the ship. Concentration lasts up to an hour. Oof, that's a cool encounter. A, vamp, a ship filled with vampires basically appears in front of you. An invisible ship materializes in front of you. That's cool. And then the last enemy here in the book is a Zodar, the last monster. A Zodar is a bipedal entity whose body is encased in an obsidian exoskeleton. Um... Typically neutral, disembodied voice, legendary resistance. Uh, what do they do? Crushing fist, forced teleport, and a wish. Ooh, a wish attack. The Zodar casts a wish spell requiring no spell components and using charisma as a spellcasting ability. After casting the spell, the Zodar turns to dust and is destroyed. Hmm. Wow. This is an interesting creature. It can also warp the fabric of the multiverse to cast a wish spell as its final act. It is destroyed once a spell is cast. Wow, that's like some... That's some, uh... That's some campaign ending shit right there. <laughs> that's nice. Well, here's the cover. The back of the book. They came from outer space. You can see the writing here. Some more of the art. Good stuff. I like those dragons. I gotta read more about those dragons so I can um, incorporate them into my game. Uh, the next book we're gonna look at is Light of Xerixis. Xerixis. And this is the adventure book uh, with Spelljammer. It's a 64-page book, and the level range on this is 5 through 8. 5 through 8. So let's take a look at this. That's an astral elf on the cover, and I, I guess that's a solar dragon maybe um, with it there. A rollicking space adventure for the world's greatest role-playing game. Let's take a look. Look at that dice. Oh, hold on. Tar Jr. asked me to look at the credits page for the uh, booze book. Let's do so. So what are you hoping to see here, Tar Jr.? Talk to me. I got the credits here. There you go. Up close and personal. That is the credit page for the uh, Booze Astral Menagerie. Okay. So let's take a look at Light of Xerxes now. I like that dice. Cool. I wonder what it has to do with the adventure. I mean, I'm not going to read the whole adventure, but uh, here is a dedication uh, in the book. Uh, this adventure is dedicated to Alex Raymond and Lorenzo Elliott Semple Jr. I got to look those folks up. I don't know who they are. Not sure what that's about. Uh, table of contents. Introduction. Wild Space Awaits. Seeds of Destruction is the first part, Terrors of the Void, part two, Chaos and Doom Space, part three, Saviors of the Multiverse is part four. 
uh, and this is in fact a solar dragon on the cover. How do I know? Because this piece of art here tells me that it's uh, Prince Zelith Alstride's solar dragon. Uh, when I do these flip throughs, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Obviously, I just kind of flip through it and, and point out things I, I find interesting, like this artwork. A Zerillion star moth jettisons one of the many astral seeds while orbiting an unsuspecting world. I wonder if the tone in this adventure matches the tone in the adventures uh, for the what they released on D&D Beyond. That I don't know. Okay, so someone in the chat is asking me where the adventure starts. I'm going to tell you right now. It says where to begin. The adventure begins in a coastal city or port town on a world where the characters are either seeking their fortunes or resting between adventures. Since most of the adventure takes place in wild space and the astral sea, the initial setting doesn't have much effect on how the adventure will play out. The character's home world serves mainly to set the stakes for the story. It is in danger of being destroyed, so using a world your players are familiar with works best, whether it's a published campaign setting or a world of your own creation. Uh, if you use Lost Minor Fandelver or Dragons of Ice Spire Peak, um, to get the characters to fifth level, then Light of Xerixes begins in the same region featured in those introductory adventures, the Sword Coast, blah, 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 City of Neverwinter, Sword Coast. I guess it doesn't really matter where the adventure starts. Oh, look at this full art page for the first part, Seeds of Destruction, part one. Really nice. That looks cool. That's, that's new. I haven't seen something presented like this before in 5e. I like it. So, the first uh, enemy you fight are Astral Blights. Those are plant creatures. And then from there, I guess you get taken on a... on an adventure. Oh, my friend Alpha Stream is going to love this. Look what we have here. Flapjack, a flump. Right on page right at the start of the adventure, Alpha Stream, you got the, you got your flumps. Someone's been listening to you. Ship to ship battle right at the beginning here. See chapter two of the Astral Adventures Guide for Rules on Ship to Ship Engagements. Again, I'm not reading the adventure, so I'm just sort of flipping through it. Here is an intro to spell jamming. Lying on the floor of this raised platform is the headless body of a mind flare. The stench of the rotting corpse is unpleasant to say the least. That that mind flare lies in an otherwise open space where you imagine the ship helms used to be. Spell jamming helm. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool piece of art. Check it out. That's nice. Now, this location where you're going here, the Rock of Brawl, that is a location that's familiar if you're a fan of Spelljammer. Rock of Brawl was a uh, location uh, described in the box set, the second edition box set. It's kind of like a hub uh, for the PCs. That's a big city. It's what it is, basically. Rock of Brawl. And this set uh, includes a map of, uh, yeah, it's an asteroid, basically, and we'll, we'll take a look at it. This is the adventure book. Someone's asking me on chat. We are looking at the adventure book. Uh, does the adventure visit Doom Space? I don't know. We'll see. I have no idea. Okay, battle maps. <coughs> Excuse me. Battle maps, and here we see the black and white um, art 
type battle maps that some people love and some people don't. I personally am a fan. I have no issue with that type of map. I love having these side views. Um, gives you a little bit of more perspective on, on where you are. There's some kind of tower. Oof, yeah, that's cool. Willow Wisp. I hate those guys. Ship of the Dead, the last breath. Space galleon that has been reduced to 90 hit points. It is a vampire ship. Oh, that's nice. We saw those right now when we were looking at the at the monster book. The vampire ships um, are invisible and then they suddenly appear right in front of you. Uh, the vampire captain, vampire captain, can turn them invisible as they approach. That's very cool. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Trust issues. <coughs> These guys are so funny. Doom space. <clears throat> All right, somebody was asking about Doom Space. So here we are. We go to Doom Space. Part three of the adventure takes place in a wild space system called Doom Space, which consists of two worlds and 12 moons spiraling towards a vortex that used to be the system's sun. What exactly is Doom Space? <clears throat> Thousands of years ago, the war between gods and primordials ended with all gods being banished from doom space. After the war, the primordials encased the system <clears throat> in a crystal sphere that kept the gods at bay. Hmm. Locations in doom space, Eye of Doom, Remains of the Sun, Vault, one of the moons. Firene is a volcanic world despoiled by dragons. Hmm. Malice is a water world now sheathed in ice. Its surface is covered by sheer sided mountains and deep canyons. The Spindle is home to a nation of highly intelligent but xenophobic yeti. All right, we don't want to meet those guys. Nine moons of N. That's like a whole setting here. It's kind of cool. I like to. I read more. Read more about this later. Doom space. <clears throat> Arena of blood. Volcat space. That was Volcat. Nice fellow. I hate these maps with these scales. One square equals 20 feet. <coughs> what am I supposed to do with that?
Krenzelis, astral elf aristocrat. <clears throat> and he's got a solar dragon. And I'm assuming he's the dude in the cover. This dude. Red Dragon Rider. Well, you know what's coming. Space Invaders. Har har. That's nice. That's a nice piece of art. Really unlike anything we've seen in 5th edition yet. Very nice looking. Here's another system. Xerix's space. Worlds. Zarendar, a lush green planet that teems with life. Elf population. Basically an elf world. <clears throat> Crowning moment. More maps. No scale here. Hmm. Oh. 10 feet. There it is. Light of Xerixes. <coughs> And the end of the adventure. Oh, let me see what's the last creature you fight. I know it's a spoiler, but it is what it is. Well, the last creature bolded is a crawling claw. <laughs> That's the final boss, a crawling claw. No, it's not. I don't know what it is, but I guess I got to read it. <clears throat> There's a Zodar. I don't remember which one's a Zodar. But I look it up. Oh, the Zodar is the creature with the wish spell. Ah. Oh yeah, a creature with the wish spell. There it is. No, big spoilers here. There, there will be spoilers, I told you. Well, that's the look at Light of Xerxes. The, that's my flip through of Light of Xerxes, the adventure book. <clears throat> we have one book left, which is the rule book. And that's the Astral Adventurer's Guide. And... This book is, uh, it includes backgrounds and races for player characters, spells and magic items, rules for running D&D campaigns set in wild space on the Astral Sea, ship descriptions and deck plans, and the Rock of Brawl. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is see the poster map. Uh, that's always the first thing I go to. I like to look at the poster maps and pull them out and, and see what's up with those. So let's take a look at the poster map of the Rock of Brawl. Ooh. Big poster. So it's double sided. Uh, the first, this side is the top side of the rock. And the flip side is the underside of the rock.
and I know I'm not doing a great job of showing you this. I'll take pictures later and post it on my Twitter feed like I always do. Um, <clears throat> so why don't we take a look at the uh, Astral Adventures Guide for 5e for Spelljammer, the last of the books. Now <clears throat> oh, that's a Nautiloid ship on the cover there. Astral Adventurer's Guide. There's that monkey dude from uh, Star Frontiers. Forgot his name already. People like to see the credits, so I'm going to give you the credits right here. There you go. Uh, I like these inspiration call outs now so the rock of brawl was an inspiration monsters of the multiverse lost ships from ed greenwood um jeff grubb spell jammers of concordance of arcane space and star frontiers alpha dawn was an inspiration um spell jammer I, I don't know if, how, if people realize this spell jammer was the the second setting released for second edition dnd &D. It wasn't one of the later settings. It was actually just the, the, the second setting released, which I find interesting. I, I, for some reason in my mind, I always thought that it was one of the later settings, and it was not. It was the second setting released, uh, I suppose, after Forgotten Realms. Uh, so we start with an introduction, vast oceans of adventure, and we go a little bit through the terminology of what's what, you know, what the astral plane is, what wild space is, the astral sea, astral campaigns, some charts for first adventures. Here's some art of the new, uh, the new character options. Astral Drifter, new background. Here's the six races available. The Astral Elf, Autonome, Ajif, Hadozi, Plasmoid, and the Three Queen. I like these. That's cool. The Outer Gnomes, mechanical beings built by rock gnomes, sometimes because of a malfunction or a unique circumstance, an Outer Gnome becomes separated from its creator and strikes out on its own. You're a construct. You're small. And I saw her face. Now I'm a believer. Plasmoids, the three queens. And with that defiler rule and that monster and, and, and this stuff, you could probably hack your own Dark Sun 5e. You don't need them to release a, a, a 5e version. <clears throat> you could just do your own. How spell jamming works. So chapter two actually goes into how spell jamming works. There's a, I guess that's a beholder. There's actually a few beholders. Spell jammer duels, air envelopes, 
When a creature or an object leaves the planet's atmosphere and enters wild space, an envelope of breathable air forms around it and lasts until that air is depleted. So a medium creature takes a five-foot cube of air with it. A creature that needs to breathe will exhaust the air in its personal envelope in one minute. Since this is barely enough time to get anywhere, most creatures travel through wild space aboard spell jamming ships, which have much larger air envelopes. Got it. And then here they try to go into the science of the setting. Gravity, air envelopes, air quality, gravity planes. I guess it does Star Wars gravity, where ships in Star Wars have their own gravity for some reason. Same thing here. Astral plane. Here's Doom Space, Astral Dominion, Wild Space System, Wild Space System, Wild Space System, Astral Dominion, Dead God, Dead God, Wild Space System, Astral Dominion, Realm Space. So Realm Space is the only one called out for Ghana Realms. But we know there's Crin Space. Uh, there's been a few other details. Um, there were books in second edition that detailed the different crystal spheres for the different settings. You can create your own wild space system here. Some new spells, air bubble, create spell jamming helm, new magic items, including the spell jamming helm. Spell jamming ships. Here are some deck plans for the ships. This is cool. Bombard. The Damselfly ship. I love these. The Astral Dreadnought. That's my favorite monster. Ever since I saw him in the first edition manual of the planes. Love those guys. I had a chance to run one in my campaign, my last campaign, not the one I'm running now, but the last one before that. I ran one of those guys. Love the Astral Dreadnoughts. Yeah, you can see it better here. Flying Fish Ship. Hammerhead Ship. Lamprey ship, a lot of ships. Living ship, night spider, scorpion ship, space galleon, squid ship. Star Moth, Turtle Ship, Tyrant Ship. Beholders carve tyrant ships out of stone using their disintegration rays and easy ships to wander the astral plane, looking for worlds to conquer and rival beholders to destroy. Hmm. Interesting. Wasp ship. The Rock of Brawl. Yeah, so this is the setting. Um, this, The Rock of Brawl was also detailed in the second edition, Spelljammer. And it's basically a hub world for, for PCs to, to visit. I'm going to assume they kept a little bit of the NPCs. And I, I know they did, actually. 
kept some of the NPCs from second edition here. Someone on the chat is asking me, would you mind flipping back to the map or the realm space again? I'm sorry, Nuke. The Nautiloids, did you miss them? No, I may have gone a little. F <clears throat> no, the Nautiloids are here. I skipped over them. So here's the Nautiloids. And they do have stats, and they have 400 hit points. And they have tentacles that can grab you and they can teleport. They can teleport you. The the map or realm spaces. Oh, let me see. I don't remember where that was. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So the only world that's called out is realm space. Everything else is empty. Wild space system, wild space system, wild space system. And then Doom Space, which shows up on the adventure. And then it tells you how to create uh, the system and how to travel between worlds. All right, so you got that. You got the Nautiloid. And then here we have the, the Rock of Brawl. A little bit of the who's who, NPC, some artwork, which is really cool. Okay, so this guy, uh, Elmander Star Charts, is run by a retired elf adventurer who once served as a spelljammer aboard a galley. So he is a NPC that was in the box set. I remember that. He sold uh, star charts and navigation you know, maps and stuff like that to PCs. So they kept him. Um, Large Luigi, I believe he's a, he, this beholder, he owns a tavern, I believe that's from 2nd edition as well. And that's it. That's it. Here's the, uh, the back of the book. Astral Adventurer's Guide. So if there's any questions that you have in the chat, I'll take them now. I'll try to answer them. I'll try to, you know, take a few few questions. Keep in mind, I haven't read the books. I just flipped through them right now with you. So it's you know, whatever you know, I know, basically. But we can look up stuff together if you have any specific questions. And if not, you know, that's the end of that. Um, the book... The books come in this very nice slipcase. Um, and with the sturdy GM screen, it's not the flimsy one from the from some of the box sets, starter sets we've seen. This is the nice sturdy one. Good quality. Uh, that we've seen. So you get an adventure, a monster book, and the rule book uh, in one set. I saw Amazon had this for like 40 something dollars, I think. Uh, I'll put it on my Twitter feed later. Yeah, Spelljammer is the kind of setting that's not for everybody. Um, and, and recently, someone's been posting recently sale figures sales figures from uh, the history of D&D, &D, you know, from, from AD&D. And, and Spelljammer wasn't a high-selling um, setting. It's not one of those settings that, that sold, that did gangbuster sales. Um, it was actually a very low, low-selling product back then. But for some reason, you know, it, it has this, this cult following and Watsi decided to go for it and, and, and sell it. Um, I, I think, you know, in my opinion, I think the time is right for it. I think that the audience is different now. And I think a product like this, you know, 
and and someone had told me this on Twitter, and I tend to agree with them that you know things like Guardians of the Galaxy, and and, and Thor, and and you know, a little bit of light light hearted, um, comedic, sci fi is something that 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 the audience accepts now, and kind of you know kind of this weird, fun, uh, stuff, and I think Spelljammer fits that, and I think, I I th I, I really think that it's you know. The time is right for this. Maybe not back in the late '80s, uh, early '90s when when the original came out, but now, I think the audience would respond well to something like Spelljammer. It'll be interesting to see what people think about it. Um, as, as everything that Watsi produces for D and D, it's a well-produced product. I mean, the quality is excellent. The artwork they spared no expense to try to bring uh, the world of Spelljammer uh, to your table. The artwork is really nice, uh, really well done. Everything is top-notch as as it. 5e art is always um you know excellent really nothing to complain about there um someone asked me if the if the book if the map was part of the slip case um the the map was attached to the astral as astral adventures guide i ripped it off from the back of that like if there were any poster map in any other book okay let me take a look at some of the some of the um, some of the questions in the chat. Um, does the DM screen have the same random encounters tables that are in the book, or are there tables from random events? There are tables for random events. Uh, it's not just uh, random encounters like the book. Uh, let me give you a little bit of let me give you a little bit of that. We can go through that right now. Uh, there are wild space encounters, random charts, astral sea encounters, random charts, ship encounters. Um, yeah, so there's ship encounters, astral sea encounters, and wild space encounters. And there's also an initial attitude chart uh, table. Boo isn't in the na in the old game material at all. No, he's not. Uh, Boo is not part of the original Spelljammer. He was a Baldur's Gate edition. The space hamsters were in the uh, Spelljammer setting in second edition. They used to power a ship. I remember that. Um, Boo himself was not part of that. He became famous afterwards in Baldur's Gate. Uh, anything else in the chat? That's probably it. Uh, I'm going to, later on, not, not tonight, maybe tomorrow night, I'll see. Uh, I'm going to do a, a, another flip through of this on Twitter. I'll try to, you know, maybe a shorter one. Um, because those things do take up <laughs> do take up some time, but uh, you know I'll post some pictures. So if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter there, Novi DM on, on Twitter, and um, nothing. Thank you for joining me on this live stream. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm not used to doing these flip throughs on on live streams. Uh, tell me if you liked it better than a Twitter. I I, I happen to like the Twitter flip throughs. Um, I did one earlier today for the uh, campaign case um, terrain. Uh, which is a set of tiles, interlocking tiles, um, and and the clings to stick onto them. Um, it's kind of an interesting product. I, I'm, I'm still not sure how I feel about the campaign case overall, both the creatures and the terrain. Um, I, I'm, I'm still, I haven't made up my mind about whether or not I like the products. Um, but they're very pretty products. Uh, very nicely, nicely produced, and they look very elegant. But I'm still trying to understand a little bit uh, you know, their purpose beyond you know I don't, I don't know I'm still trying to understand how, how they're different from tokens and, and tiles um, so no that's it okay I'm gonna post this video later on YouTube it'll be up on my YouTube channel um, I'll put links on, on Twitter and, and whatnot all right so thank you everybody for joining me on this thank you everybody who was in the chat and um, 
Well, we'll see you guys around, okay? Bye.